So welcome back to part two of my solar panel install. Just give you a little information first off before we get going here. First off, I don't have an inverter. I'm not going to be connecting an inverter. But if you were to, it's fairly easy. You just run the wire straight to the battery. You don't go through any of your fuse box. You don't go through your solar controller for the inverter. That's a completely separate animal. Um, also, I think the highest load that I have right now on my system is my fridge and it draws at max, it draws uh, 4.8 amps, I believe, when it's uh, first cycles on. So everything's fairly low um, ampage and low draw. Okay, so now getting into the actual install a little bit, I'm going to be putting everything in this bench. And if you haven't watched my electrical video, maybe you want to start there. I talk a little bit more about the different type of crimp connectors, the tools we should be using, how I built my battery box, that sort of stuff. I'll see if I can, I'll link that up top. Put that up top there for you. But now let's get into the solar controller itself, uh, the solar panel installed down here for the electrical. So first off, I put uh, one of these grates in my bench because the solar controller needs a lot of airflow in behind it. Uh, it can it can build up a lot of heat. So here's where I mounted it, right there. And one, one thing I did is, you can see in here, that I just I stood it off from the wood with a nut. So I put a, a nuts on each spot and then I bolted it right through so it's solid. So that thing's mounted solid in there and I think it's going to have a lot of air, good airflow through because of my grill that's here and also because of those nuts holding it off. Here's the wires coming down from my solar panel right here. So the negative I just got coming right down and right into it. The positive I'm going to put on a switch here. Uh, why? Why do I want to switch it? Well, uh, I live in the north in Canada and we don't have enough solar uh, like there's not enough output from the Sun for the amount of consumption of my solar controller so I need to cut my solar controller off at sometimes because it's just using more power than it's actually making to do that then to shut off your solar controller you need to cut the power from the panels first if you were to just cut the pan, uh, power to the batteries and cut the power off from the solar controller it'll overheat so you got to kill the power coming in from the panels first then you can shut it off that's a two-stage thing you got to make sure you do that the right way otherwise you will fry your controller so there's going to be a switch on that wire I'm going to be running all of the wiring uh, with this number eight gauge so it's eight gauge uh, multi-strand wire I'm just going to be using my yellow crimp uh, crimps there, the liquid tights. I want to run everything through a shunt because I want to be able to measure my amps. Again, if you want to take a look at my electrical video, I talk more about that. I've got a 50 amp fuse. Again, I'm not running an inverter, so 50 amps more than enough. That 50 amp fuse, I'm going to mount right in there. I want it right in the battery battery box, as close to that battery terminal. That's where the positive, where I'm bringing off all the power. So I want it as close to that as possible. I'm going to take my positive from that side, my negative from this side. You don't want to do the same battery. You want to spread it across uh, the group of batteries you're using. So I'm going to go positive up to my fuse block, and then positive out, coming out here. And then out here, I'm going to run it into um, a switch, a circuit breaker type switch. And I'll be able to shut off the battery bank. Then I'm going to run another shut off. I got two, two shut offs. The other shut off is going to be able to just shut off the charge controller. So I want to have, be able to shut the charge controller off, say if it's really cloudy, uh, there's just no power that's not making any power I want to be able to, to take that load off of my batteries so I can go longer so just have my um, uh, components laid out here 
So I've got my 50 amp fuse. I decided rather than putting it in the box, I put it outside where I can see if it blow. Um, I can just see it, replace it, make it a lot, it's a lot more accessible. And then I've got my uh, circuit breaker, my shut off for my fuse panel and my shut off for my charge controller. Cause I was thinking like sometimes I wanna kill all the power in the unit, like in the trailer, maybe the, um, like the, the furnace, the fridge, all that stuff. I want to kill that, but I'd still want it to charge through solar charge. Like I wouldn't mind my solar panel uh, maintaining it. But sometimes when it's just really gray, really bad weather, just shut off my solar panel also, solar charge controller, but maybe I'm camping and I want to keep um, my heater, my uh, <laughs> fridge, everything else working. So that's why I went with two separate uh switches circuit breakers so these are they're not really meant to be a switch but it's pretty easy to use them as a switch so they've just got this reset down here and then a disconnect here so you disconnect it and it's got it's got line and load so you want the line coming in is the power coming in so i'm just going to run this to my power this to my power and then the power here into my controller power here into my fuse box so that's pretty simple the other thing is is I'm gonna run all my all my grounds through my shunt because I want to make sure that uh, my shunt is measuring uh, the voltage in the voltage out I want to have an accurate measurement for that so that's gonna be there and then basically I'm just wiring it um, like I did before so pretty straightforward so let's get started let's get this thing wired up I'll show you the finished product just to show you the uh, wire I'm using. So this, coming out of here, this is 4 gauge. All my battery connections are done with 4 gauge. I've already crimped, soldered, and then um, heat shrinked these connections because that was done in my previous video. But now I'm adding this, and I'm gonna add 8 gauge. I'm adding 8 gauge from the controller to um, this line here to charge the setup. And also I'm gonna run 8 gauge from um, uh, my shut off here down to my fuse box so this will be eight gauge this will be with eight gauge you need a lug so these this is the lug kit i bought well it's missing the label anyways it's just a generic lug kit off of amazon again if you're looking for them uh look for one that doesn't have a seam if it's got a seam in it then you know it's a very poor quality one so what i do with this is i just use my normal crimper on it uh for the insulated and then I will take and I'll clamp this in the vise and I'll heat this up and solder in here. So each section will have solder. And then I just slide a little bit of that uh, heat shrink tube over it and uh, heat shrink it. So I'll just show you that real quickly. Uh, we'll go through that on a time lapse. So I just wanted to explain the process here a little bit. So uh, I did talk about already the wire size, the lugs, but when, when you strip it, strip the wire, just strip it back so you can see there's some extra wire here and this side on the lug. And then use your just your normal butane torch, a normal electrical solder, electrical repair solder. I'm using 16th of an inch here. And what I do is you put heat right to the bottom of the lug. Don't put heat onto the wire. And you put heat to the bottom of the lug and you touch your solder on your wire. And when it melts, it, you'll know it's up to temperature when it melts on the wire itself. So even though the heat's on the lug. And then you just feed it in there until the solder starts coming back out and you know that lug is full of solder. I find that's good. It works really well and it creates a very strong a strong fitting that won't break it's very strong and then what I do is I just feed a little bit of a uh, shrink tube over top of it slide it on cover it up and then uh, just with your uh, heat gun uh, warm up the this the shrink tube so that makes a pretty good connection I think that's about the best connection you can get uh, with these lugs but I think the important part of this is to solder it, not just to pound it down. It's really a good idea to solder it, and it takes no time at all. I, again, just the solder, it's just, uh, what is it, 60-40 solder. 
So yeah, that works well for me. I found that they'll never break. It's good for battery cables, for anything. It's just a good solid way to make a lug. Okay, so those are the end products. You can see they're all pretty strong. They're not gonna come apart and it gives you a nice solid connection. I also just tinned, lightly tinned, the end that's going into the charge controller just to keep the wires from fraying as I'm putting it in. But uh, that's good, I think I'm all set now. Here's the completed job. So we've got 50 amp coming in, then we got a 30 amp circuit breakers. Right now they're all connected. Everything's working. You can hear my diesel heater running right now. I just want to put a little bit of a load on it. Uh, wires running around to my charge controller. Right now the panel is on. The soil pa solar panels are charged. And so again, just to uh, reiterate this, you got to shut off your panels first, then shut off the power to your solar controller. Otherwise you can fry it. So everything seems to be working pretty good. Uh, let's jump up to the display. I'll show you what's going on. So there's the display. Everything seems to be working pretty good. Really overcast day. We're getting in 2.3 amps. Um, and nothing coming out because I don't have anything hooked up on the load side of the charge controller. Uh, there's nothing there. It just goes straight to the battery to charging the battery. Oh, we lost our display. So I've got my shunt here. This gives me my capacity. Uh, how much you can see how much is going in. It's actually charging the battery right now. Plus it'll drop down in the negative when it's drawing it down. So I'm thinking at night time it'll probably start dropping it down. I'll keep you guys posted how it goes. Like how uh, how it's charging. How it's working out. Again, there's my battery box here. I thought I'd just give you a quick peek before I put the cover back on. So I've got my temperature sensor. It's right in here, all the way back to my uh, solar charger. So then if these get too hot, it'll shut it off, or if it's too cold, uh, it, it charges at a different rate. So that's it. Everything's good. I like it. I think it's gonna work out all right. Um, we're going camping tomorrow, so I'll let you know. Thanks for watching and uh, give the video a like, a subscribe if you want a little bit more of this kind of uh, content.